The Cube presents Dell Technologies World, brought to you by Dell. Welcome back to Dell Tech World 2022. This is The Cube Live. My name is Dave Vellante. We're here with our wall-to-wall -wall coverage. This is day two. We actually started last night, uh, the, the Cube After Dark. John Furrier's here, Lisa Martin, Dave Nicholson. We're going to talk about Apex, the business value of Apex, Flex on Demand. Darren Fedorowicz is here. He's the Senior Vice President of Dell Financial Services. And we're joined by a customer and a partner, Judd Barron is R&D Infrastructure Architect at Silicon Labs, and Steve Fazen is the Regional VP of CompuCenter, Comp Computer Center. <laughs> I say that like I'm from Boston. Guys, <laughs> welcome to theCUBE. <laughs> Thank you. Darren, take us through what's going on with, with Apex. You got custom solutions. You know, people are going to ask, is this just a financial gimmick? What is this? No gimmicks, no gimmicks, Dave. So I think when we think about technology, historically, customers purchased. They bought and they owned and they may have financed it and paid over time, but it was really an ownership model, especially in infrastructure. And Apex is about subscription. So think about Dell Apex as you can either buy or you can subscribe to your technology. And under Apex subscription, we have options for custom-based solutions or an outcome-based. And I know today we're going to talk about flex on demand and, and custom-based solutions. So it's a high level, pay for what you use when you use it with a high level of choice and flexibility. All right, Steve, I'm going to ask you to play a little co-host. All right, I like me, this. Okay, so add some color, color commentary. Judd, tell us a little bit about uh, of, of Silicon Labs. I'm really interested in what your requirements were, your challenges, and kind of why you landed on, on Apex. Sure. Uh, Silicon Labs is a semiconductor company. We're headquartered in Austin, Texas. Uh, just under a billion dollars a year right now. And uh, at any EDA shop, or uh, that, that people who are doing electronic design automation, uh, it's not just in the semiconductor industry, but we have these HPC farms where we're running you know, millions of jobs a day. And the balance that you have to strike when you're doing capacity planning in one of these environments is, we have these things called tape outs, and that's where we're finishing a project and there's a much higher volume of jobs that we have to run, and you have to decide, do we buy for peak? Or do we you know, come under that some amount and say, oh, we're going to buy 80% of what we think As the peak is going to be. As in overbuy, yeah, overbuy for peak. Right? Oh, but <laughs> overbuy for peak normally, right? Yeah, Correct. Yeah, right. Right. The, hard, the hard one is do you overbuy or do you yeah, underbuy? Yeah, right. It's always a hard decision. <laughs> There's a trade off, right? And, and so the, the challenge there is that you'll end up kind of lengthening the time and potentially miss a tape out window. And there's costs associated with that because you work with the foundry and you kind of schedule based off that tape out when you're going to deliver the photo mask to them. So anyway, the point is we, in the past, using a traditional like CapEx, we're going to buy a bunch of servers. We, we tend to sh undershoot whatever our peaks are because we may have a peak every couple of months during you know, these tape outs, uh, but you know, sometimes tape outs slip and so one slips two months, another one comes in a little bit early and now you have multiple tape outs in the same months and what was going to be a, a small uh, difference in, from peak to what you actually purchased ends up being a big peak. And uh, the thing that was interesting to us about Flex On Demand is the ability to have a commit rate that you know, the customer can work with Dell Financial Services to figure out, is it 80%, is it 60%, whatever, and they give us additional servers that we pay just when we're using them. Now, I'm somewhat oversimplifying the process, um, but we're, we've got to talk about that. But, but the point is, if I understand it correctly, that infrastructure was dominoing the, the time to tape out in a negative way, and you, you've it, been it, able to address that more cost effectively. It, it can, it, it has it, on occasion, and so this, this basically gives us a way to, a lever to pull to say, well we can spend some additional OPEX this month and open up this additional capacity. So it, it's not like bursting to the cloud exactly, uh, because I mean you, you have to have the equipment in your data center already for you to be able to use it, but um, it's under a traditional acquisition model, it's, it's just not a, a, a thing that was available to us before. And looking at leasing or, or other types of uh, you know, financing was, wasn't really attractive previously, but the flex on demand model, when we first heard about it, we're like, that's very interesting, tell me more. And we ended up using it in, in Austin, and then we built a whole data center in Asia and did the whole thing on flex on demand. And Got it. Okay, Steve. 
Uh, talk a little bit about your role, what's going on at, at Computer Center, and you know, why Apex? Give us the background. Yeah, um, Computer Center is a, one of the largest global VARs on the planet, right? Um, we, we have a lot of global and international reach, but at the end of the day, it's about one-on-one -on -one customer relationships, um, talking to them, understanding what their challenges are. And we've had a multi-year relationship with Judd. I've known you for a, a long time. And, and um, typically that relationship, or the, initially that relationship was about collaborating, working hand in hand, kind of figuring out what the solutions were that best fit their environment to solve their issues they need. And it was typically a procurement, a, a purchase-based relationship. And, and it wor worked well for a long time. But it, when Judd posed the challenge to us about kind of more pay-as-you-go uh, uh, subscription-based modeling for, for how he wanted to acquire in the future, um, we just, we huddled with the Dell team collectively um, and, and talked about what we could offer and how we could solve the problem. Uh, Apex is a really nice brand today, but this was two and a half years ago. <laughs> okay, so it was a little, we were a little early on, on putting it together. I feel good that we were able to, to put that type of solution together for Judd and it's, and it's working today, working wonderful today, and it was good for, it's good for the, whenever it's good for the customer, the manufacturer, and the partner all together, it's a wonderful solution. So you took a little risk, yep. but it worked out, and you helped reduce Yeah, that, that was risk. probably the infancy uh, as we were growing our as a service. Think of this, you know, there's a lot of big words out there, Dave, right? As a service, utility, cloud, it doesn't matter what it is. Super this, cloud. It's super cloud, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> it, this is really, Judd was talking about a really important element, which is around flexibility, choice. There's uncertainty oftentimes in, a, in an environment, but they want to control. They still want to have a level of control and leveraging partnerships, being able to deliver flexibility and choice. Don't worry about the words. Don't worry about cloud, utility, as a service. We end up solving the customer need, right? And when we talk about flex on demand, I'll give you a little bit deeper into flex on demand. So when we think about flex on demand, it really is about understanding the customer needs and our capability, and Judd referenced this, determining what a baseline is. So if you think about your own utility bill, right? You're, you go home, and even if you're on vacation for a month, I'm sure you went on vacation for a month, right? <laughs> One month at a time, hitting trying to Hawaii. think of if I ever Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> but if you leave, your utility bill, even if you don't turn on a light, you still get a utility bill. It's your baseline. So we, we determine a baseline with our customers, with Computer Center, to understand in your environment, you're going to use this minimum amount, and that becomes your baseline. And that baseline can go as low as 25% and up to 80%. In a server environment, it usually is typically in this 70, 80%. And then we determine what is going to be optimal based on that 25 or above. We charge based on the usage on a day-to-day -day basis, averaged by a month, and if you go up one month during your peak, you get charged at that peak. If you then a couple months are lower, then you're going to pay only for the usage. And so for a customer that's growing, has variability or seasonality, um, this is a great model, because they can still control their environment, either within their own domain or um, in a colo, they also have the capability to pick anything within the Dell ISG catalog, any product, configure it to meet their environment, be able to work with a trusted partner like Computer Center, that it's a Dell solution based on a partner relationship and delivers choice and flexibility on the catalog of anything Dell sells within your control of how you can configure it. So it gives this ability to say, instead of buying, and instead of paying a predictable payment, uh, i.e. a financing, I'm going to pay for use. Yeah. If I turn on my light switch more, if it's during the summer in Texas where I am, the AC is a lot higher, so your utilities go up. And if you are much lower because you're on vacation in Hawaii, maybe you've been on vacation in Hawaii for a month, you're going to have a much lower and you're going to hit your baseline. Right. So it gives flexibility, choice, and it gives the control back to the customer. Okay, so the whole ISG portfolio, 
So you're like the tip of the spear for future Apex, right? We, we, we absolutely are the tip, and that's why, you know, Steve referenced a couple years ago as we were still in our infancy, growing, listening to our customers, listening to our partners, we've evolved to become a more robust program. Um, 35 countries today, so we can cover 35 countries over the globe, all ISG products that are sold mm -hmm. with a high level of flexibility in it, and it's Judd and feedback over time that we've continued to evolve this program. So mm -hmm. Judd, you, if I understood correctly, the business impact to you was got a better predictability, you didn't have to over buy or underbuy and take all that risk. Is that right? You maybe could quantify, do you ever quantify that? Or what can you tell us about the, the business impact? Yeah, sh sure. So, I mean, traditionally we will uh, base our capacity demands on a complex calculation that effectively just boils down to number of engineers, like headcount. Uh, and, and you know, kind of personas within that, and we figure out, okay, well, how many compute cores do we need? And then we say, okay, well, how many tape outs are we doing? And when are those tape outs going to land? And try to figure out which months are going to be the hot months. And the design teams have to kind of vary their tape out schedules so that they don't pile up all into like July or something. And then there's not enough compute capacity. So with with something like flex on demand, where I can turn additional capacity on. In our HPC farm, it, you know, we just go in and make some changes to the LSF configuration and say, hey, you know, now you've got these extra nodes available. We don't really have to worry about that as much. Uh, in fact, last year we, we ended up with one month where for us it was unusual. We had five tape outs uh, all land within two weeks of one another. And they all finished, which in previous years before we had deployed that, that would not have been the outcome. Things We would have had multiple uh, tape outs delayed and it, you know that that's a seven figure impact for each one of those commits that we miss with the foundries so it, it's a big deal yeah that's real dollars and it is and yeah. you know what else this as as Joe was going through this we all know there's supply chain, chain constraints right. and this solves a lot of supply constraints because Judd, if you would be purchasing today, you'd be buying, you're looking ahead and you're actually having to purchase today where if you go into an Apex Flex on Demand, you don't have that full commitment of having to purchase, but you can get ahead of the supply chain. So you can be looking six months in advance, you can be doing capacity planning. And I'm, Judd, I'm sure you're doing that, leveraging like what's my future and not be worried about, I have this huge burden up front. Yeah, and I mean, we have two levers right now. One is, we have this extra capacity there. I can you know, pick up the phone and, and call our Dell rep and say, hey, I'm going to modify my commit rate. And so now that's you know, the new baseline I can use all day, every day. Uh, and and you know, we still have some burst ability. And then separately, we can say, we want to expand the contract or, or you know, basically acquire more hardware for additional burst or additional commit. Both of those things are, are options. We only had the, we had to go buy it and we need to know when we have to have it available so you kind of back into this ordering schedule for uh, you know, like a traditional CapEx purchase. So Steve, obviously Silicon Labs is, is leaning in. Are you seeing any other patterns in your customer base uh, where this is being applied? What can you share with us there? Yeah, it, it, I believe this is a fairly horizontal solution. Any customer can really utilize it. I mean, traditionally, people would buy for two and three years worth of capacity and slowly consume it over time, yeah. but you paid up front, right? That's how it, that's kind of how it worked, because they didn't want to go back to the well year after year after year. Right. So, um, you know, and I, and I think, I think, if anything, the, the, the cloud, the hyperscalers has, uh, uh, taught the world some things, taught the industry some things. You know, in, in, in a perfect world, customers would like to consume and pay for what they use, you know, and in the increments that they use it, as much as possible, as closely aligned to that as they could get. And what I see, what I see in this, you know, because I, I kind of put, in my role, I'm putting solutions and customers and bringing those together, right, and, and complementing that with services of our own. Right. But, but what I see over time that, that almost all the manufacturers, and Dell does a wonderful job, but almost all the manufacturers will be delivering technology on a subscription basis. So the more I learn, the more I know, the more I understand about how to deliver those and provide those to customers, the better off we are. Because it aligns with business value and that's Correct. what you're right. seeing, Judd. Correct. Steve made an interesting comment in there. Uh, you know, he's talking about the cloud and for us, there's always pressure to say, hey, you know, can we burst in the cloud? And for EDA workloads, every time we look at this, 
It's a data problem. It, it, it's not a computing problem for us. Uh, EDA workloads tend to generate a lot of data, and you know there's a, there are a lot of tools. Uh, you know there's just a bunch of stuff that you have to have available to run those jobs, and so you have to look at that very carefully. The company that I work for, Silicon Labs, has been around for a long time, and we have a lot of development effort that's been put into automating and simplifying things for our design engineering, and trying to you know manipulate that and make it to where we can burst just certain jobs out to the cloud efficiently and cost effectively hasn't really resonated for us, but the flex on demand thing gave us the ability to kind of achieve some of that burst ability. I mean, not to the same level of scale, of course, but you know, we, we can do that at you know, our own speed in our own data centers with our own data, and we don't have to worry about trying to you know, peel an onion and put something new together it, to it, make it cloud friendly. It, it's substantially similar. We got to go, but Darren, bring us home. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> hey, I think when we think about Dell, it's about listening to our customers and our partners, mm -hmm. which we continue to do. We continue to evolve our products, and, and Apex is around choice and flexibility and delivering to customers an option to pay for what they use. It's a great solution, appreciate the time. Guys, great conversation. Thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. All right, thank good you. Luck. All right, and thank you for watching. This is Dave Vellante for theCUBE. We'll be back with more wall-to-wall -wall coverage. John Furrier will be back, Lisa Martin, Dave Nicholson. You're watching theCUBE.